Soundtracks? Soundtracks. Soundtracks. I've got awesome examples. Okay. Looking at these two soundtracks, which would you say is the bootleg? I'm online. <laughs> yeah. The one that's printed darker is probably the bootleg. Wow. And you're correct. I had even said that to Valerie. I was like, wow, look, the sun may beefed up the beefed up the colors. Now, what? just out of curiosity, what made you say that? Just because um, it looked over oversaturated? No, because I, I did some research on the like, because I got sent a bootleg Android, and they oh, talked wow. a lot about the printing and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's probably a giveaway in a few things. Yeah, yeah. There's another one that you'll find on almost 90% uh, of the anime bootlegs. This logo, this S and M logo. They haven't been using that one lately. They oh, really? Have they changed their logo? Oh, God, what are they now? Have well, there's there's two different companies that are the Smile. biggest. Smile. You don't see Smile as much anymore. The two biggest offenders right now are Sanmei, uh, which we jokingly call them Stolen Melodies, because it's a company in China that literally takes a legitimate product, reproduces it, and sells it at almost no, no cost. The funny thing about some of these soundtracks, and I won't say it about all of them, some of them are missing songs. The, boot, the Chrono Crusade soundtrack that, that, that I think that one was a Mia Recordings bootleg is missing four songs, including the opening. How can you sell an anime soundtrack without the opening? The booklets. Yeah, the booklets are usually... I will say Mia does a pretty... I hate to say good job, but they do a pretty... They do everything they can to make it hard to spot. Um, another one that you've heard me mention it several times now, Mia Recordings. And uh, you can actually look Sanmei or Mia up on Wikipedia on it. It explains full and well that's what they the do. One, Mia, the... Mia recordings, and that's the one I see all over the place now. I they've kind of taken, yeah, they've kind of taken the first place <laughs> bootlegger uh, position. And the funny thing is, of these two, the printing thing holds true again. This is the bootleg, and this is I I, I would guess that the the lighter and more crisp colors, because if you look at these two, this has a crisper image. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah. Well, you can't always oh, tell yeah. by the spine. Well, there is something on the spine that you can look for, and this is for on Japanese rock CDs, because somebody said, well, you didn't talk about J-Rock. Um, there is something that is a code that appears, and let me see if these have them. Yeah, they do. Actually, this one does, and it's the illegitimate one. It is, and I can finally verify the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, I thought it was 12. There is a nine-digit code that you will see on the side of every single Japanese CD. I'm glad I had this one because they're videotaping. Um, Hi, videotape. Um, if you do not see this, this is the Japanese equivalent of our UPC code. So if you don't see this on your Miyavi CD, or well, now Miyavi's got an American producer, or uh, American distributor, but like um, yeah. GAC, CD, GAC CDs are a perfect one. If you don't see this, you probably have a bootleg CD. Um, this, this, someone pointing, and I can't take the credit for this, Emily Kringle from Eagle Anime is the person that told me about that. Um, and, and I will say this, as I've tried to get more familiar with bootleg, uh, the vendors that sell legitimate products are always a great resource for you. If you have something that you don't know is legitimate, if you go to a, 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 you know, a reasonable reseller, they'll tell you how to spot it. In fact, it's one of the things that I tell people to do to irritate bootleg vendors at conventions. Go ask them, how do I know this isn't bootleg? Because the ones that, that sell legitimate products will go, oh, well, because this has, you know, this logo and it's shrink wrapped and da 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 da. And here's, you know, the copyright holder. It says Funimation. It's on this slip tag. People that sell unlicensed merchandise will get very short with you and very ugly very quick. So I, I like, people give themselves away as far as I'm concerned. Because I'm like, how do I know that poster's not bootleg? We're going to talk about posters in a minute because they're awful. But uh, yeah. There's one vendor that if I if I could call the cops on him I would, but um, but so you can you know who I'm talking about? Um, you probably but, uh, some of those items on that table. Oh, probably so. Probably he probably sold some of these, but um, uh, yeah, I, I would say that approaching the vendors specifically, they do a lot to give themselves away. Um, the other thing about bootleg CDs, um. They're very often done mass-produced on home equipment. 
which means uh, the disks don't have any kind of decent life. Uh, if they're recorded, if they're duplicated at a high speed, they have a higher skip rate and they have you know a lot of other technical problems with them. So, um, and it gets it gets back to my point that I always try to you know when I'm trying to convince kids not to buy bootleg merchandise, bootleg merchandise is never going to be quality merchandise, and it's so hard to get that through people's heads. The whole point of selling a bootleg is to take something and do a knockoff of it and sell it for as, to produce it for as little and sell it for as much as possible. So if the whole idea is cutting corners, they're going to cut corners anywhere they can. So if that means you have a crappy CD that doesn't, you know, that plays in your home CD player but not your car, so be it. They've already made your 10 bucks and chances are you bought it in an arena like a convention or eBay where you can't get your money back. Um, which I, I will talk about eBay in just a little bit because that's where all bootlegs go to die as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I will say that they're very proactive of trying to get information about spotting things uh, out there.